Morning. Morning. Welcome back. Wait, which one was the assignment? So we're continuing on unit 10. This is day four. We're using some real world applications. So we're going to be having some word problems. It is the 18th of March. So we're back from spring break. And this is fourth period. All right. So we're going to be putting ourselves in the shoes of some real world people that actually, you know, they, they use these techniques to figure things out. So <coughs> store managers, when they're trying to figure out how much money is going to come in or how much stock they need to purchase, while they may not be sitting down using these exact same physical techniques in terms of putting it into a matrix in their calculator, they are still looking at it from the same sort of viewpoint. Okay. <coughs> so let's look at our first story. Jesse, Maria, Charles, they go to the local craft store. They're going to purchase supplies so that they can make decorations because they're on the committee to decorate for prom. Jesse purchased three sheets of craft paper, four boxes of markers, and five glue sticks for his team. His bill was $24.40. Maria goes into the store. She pays $30.40. She gets six sheets of craft paper, five boxes of markers, and two glue sticks for her team. And then Charles rolls in and only spends thirteen dollars forty cents. He gets three mm. sheets of craft paper, two boxes of markers, and one glue stick for his team. That's good. We've been asked to figure out how much each item costs. Not how much was spent total for all of the craft paper, but how much a single sheet of craft paper costs, how much a single box of markers costs, how much a single glue stick costs. Step number one to doing that is let's get some variables rolling for each of these three items. Can I have your favorite variable, whichever variable you'd like? Uh, v, 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 X, D, S, V, V, S, Ooh, okay, so. Oh, v, S, V, H, S. Okay, so V, <laughs> I'm like confused. Okay, box of markers. H. H, and then, S. And then S. glue sticks. S. S, okay, so we really are saying V, H, S. All right, right on. I'm down with it. Now let's write our linear equation. So we're going to go back up to the story, and we're going to reread the story, and this time we're going to try to figure out how we relate all of these things together. Now if I look at this first start of the equation, I see 2440. So this is how much Jesse spent. So I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to look for Jesse in the story. Okay, Jesse purchased three sheets of craft paper. So I'm going to take the variable using the, that we're using to represent craft paper, and I'm going to say we have three of those. So three sheets of craft paper plus four boxes of markers plus five glue sticks. You're making me write a 5 and an S next to each other. This is going to end horribly. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, let's find Maria. $30.40. All right, she bought six sheets of craft paper. And then she got five boxes of markers. And then she bought two glue sticks. And then Charles, Chuck, three sheets of craft paper. And two boxes of markers. And one glue stick. Now, I don't need to write the one, but I'm going to. And you're welcome to add in those ones if you have a setup and they're not there. If it's just the variable by itself, you can throw a one in there without any issues and everyone will be happy. Okay. Time to transform this into our matrix. Please remember that for our matrix, we want on the left side of the equal sign, the variables, and on the right side of the equal sign, the not variables. Do we have it in the correct setup? Yes. 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 
all the variables are on the left side of the equal sign and all the not variables are on the right side of the equal sign. The next question is, is do I have them set up where all of the same variable are all lined up one on top of each other? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Now I can write my matrix and I know that I won't have any issues. Your calculator will not draw that vertical bar, but I'm putting it there so that we can see where the equal sign is. There's our matrix. And now we're going to go to our calculator. Okay. Go ahead and give yourself a new calculator page to get rid of the work that the person before you did. Oh, okay. Just to make sure that you have it clear. Yeah, because it's like right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The shortcut is just to type in the letters R R E F. Instead of going through like menu and create, you just type R R E F. Don't forget your parentheses. And then the matrix is found here between the nine and the book. So the button between the nine and the book will bring up a pop-up menu that from that menu you want to select the one that looks like a three by three matrix. Make sure you tell it the correct number of rows and columns. Remember that the columns are the up and down one. So this one has four columns. And the number of rows, rows are gonna be going side to side. This one has three. So you want three rows, four columns. And now I'm just going to copy in the numbers exactly as I see them. Three by four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually when a store manager is doing something like this, um, they will have created an Excel spreadsheet that's doing this for them. So they're not actually going to TI Inspire. But the thought process behind this all remains the same. And when you've hit enter, you will have created an answer matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down right now. Now here's the thing. This answer doesn't make any sense to someone who didn't know what you were doing. And so if you're the store manager and this is what your Excel, spre Excel spreadsheet kicks back at you, you can look at it and probably have an idea of what these numbers mean. But if then if I hand this to someone else and go, this is your answer, they're going to be like, duh, what? Right? They're not going to know what's going on. So we got to turn this into words that they can then understand. So I have to interpret what this matrix is telling me. What did this first column contain? Information about what? Sheets of craft paper. The sheets of craft paper. If I look in this column, everything is a zero but this. And if I look across the row, everything is a zero but that, which tells me that the price of one craft paper is $1.75. What did the second row, rep second column represent? The, for one box, box of markers is box $3.60. Of markers. And 60 cents. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same game. And so this is the price of one box of markers. And for one glue stick is how many? The 95 cents. Yes, sir. Here's our spot for the glue sticks. And so this is my price for a single glue stick. <coughs> and 
now we've done what's asked. Because we've determined the unit cost for each individual item that they purchased. Now there's two other examples here. I'd love to do one more with you. So f look through it, read through them, and decide the one example of the remaining two that you're going, I don't know. Help, please. Do the examples read through them? Yeah. The example two, and then on the back there's example three. Okay, I've already got someone asking for example three. I suspect because it's only like three sentences long. It's like there doesn't feel like there's enough information. All right, join me on the back. Let's look at example three. That's it, that's all example three is. Just three sentences. It's, just, it's three sentences, and one of the sentences is a question. So it's not even information, it's asking a question. So it's two sentences worth of information and somehow we've got to find answers for three things. Okay, let's read the situation. 240 people watching a movie. There are 20 more adult men than adult women and 20 more adults than children. How many adult men, adult women and children are at the picnic? Right? Okay, so. <laughs> I have a feeling what's actually happening here is that there's like the movies at the park. You know how sometimes at McKelvey Park down yes. where the express is, they like put up a big sub on a big sheet and they like project a movie on it and you get to take your family into the park and you have a picnic in the grass while watching. That's what's happening. That's the only reasonable explanation how we go from watching a movie to going on a picnic. Okay? So movies in the park, you're eating a picnic. We got 240 people doing that. 20 more men than women. 20 more adults than kids. How many adult men, adult women, adult children? Step number one, let's rock some variables. All right, men, T, 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 and then M for women. Okay, and then for children, C. Oh, I, you said M for women, I'm so sorry. M for women. T for men, M for women. See, you can write whatever variables you want on your paper. This is just the one that I'm rocking right now because this is what happens when I pull for letters and I get randomness. This is okay. All right, we're going to express what's going on in a set of different equations. And really, this is the hard part in real life, okay, is figuring out the rules that these things follow that then we can use to predict things and make statements. All right, so 240 is the total number of people there. The total number of people are made up of all of the men plus all of the women plus all of the children. And so this equation is going to have the men, T, plus the women, M, plus the children, C. And there's our first equation. The second fact that we were told about the people hanging out at McKelvey Park, watching a movie on a stretched out savannah, is that there's 20 more men than women. Does that mean there's more men or more women? More men, which means I should take the number of women and add something to it to get the number of men. What am I adding to the number of women? How many more men 20. are there than women? Right here, 20. There are 20 more men than women. So in order to figure out how many men there are, I need to know the number of women, and then I add 20. Okay. So if there's 20 women, I know there's 30 men. The last one. The last part of this thing right here says that there are 20 more adults than children, which means there are more adults total than there are children. So I should take the number of children and add 20, and that's going to give me the total number of adults. But the number of adults is made up of the number of men and 
the number of women. Sorry about the extra space. Okay, so T plus M is representing the number of adults. All of the adults, men and women, both. Okay, I'm pausing here because this really is the most confusing part of this whole thing. Are we feeling okay with these equations? Looking around for some knots, making sure we're feeling okay with it. Yeah? Oh, yes. Okay. So now let's transfer these into matrix form. But remember, matrix form only works if all the variables are on the left of the equals and all of the not variables are on the right of the equals. Is that what I have for the first equation? Yes. The variables are on the left, the not variables on the right. Do I have that for the second? Yes. No, I have a variable here on the right-hand side, which means what oh. needs to happen to this variable? Mm. So, no, you put it to the other side. Subtract I'm going to move it, so I'm going to subtract an M. Good. What about this third one? You subtract the C. I'm going to subtract the kids. Okay, so the second equation is going to be T minus M equals 20. And this equation is going to be T plus M minus C. So the adults, so the men pl plus the women minus the kids. Yes. Sounds like a good day for the adults. Right? All right, let's turn this into a matrix form. <coughs> None of these have coefficients, which means the numbers are all ones. Okay? So I have. One adult, one adult, one kid, okay? One group, basically, and we're trying to figure out how many are in each group. Okay, so one, one, one. One, negative one, one. One, now notice the second equation. The second equation has no C variable which means in the C variable location in the second equation, I have to put a zero because I have no information. Negative one. And then now my not variables. All right, and then I'll be able to stick this in the calculator and I should get numbers. Now, as you're putting these in the calculators, what kinds of numbers for answers can you expect? You can expect negatives. Fraction, no. Fractions. Okay, let's think about this. These are people we're talking about. Oh, then yeah. We don't want negative people. Negativity is not allowed at a you know, picnic in the park. Okay, it's a nice day, beautiful weather, stop being negative. Yay, very Be nice. positive. And then we want whole people, okay? Preferably we don't want like half a child dragging themselves. That's just, that's a walking dead moment right there and let's not. Okay, so we're expecting positive whole numbers. If we don't get positive whole numbers, I urge you to double check to make sure you didn't typo and fat finger something and put in a wrong number. And if everything copied down okay, then go back and make sure your setup is okay. Now, let's read the last sentence, because I know you guys are getting your, your answer matrix. The last sentence says, solve the system of linear equations to determine the unit cost of, I may have just hit copy paste and forgot to change it. We're not talking about the unit cost of anything. What are we talking about? Uh, How many people? We're talking about the number of adult men and adult women and children that are not zombies, <laughs> but are in fact eating a picnic that is not made of people. It's made of sandwiches of and maybe people. celery sticks and some delicious grapes. See, now I'm hungry. And livers. Lunch is next for some of us. We want the whole number of people that are out there. And what we expect to see is that the number representing the number of adult men is 20 more than the number we're getting for the adult women. 
and that the number of the adult men and the adult women together, meaning the number of adults total, is 20 more than the number of children. And as long as that happens, we good. Concerns, questions, comments about this, suggestions about how I could present this. All right, that's all I had. Thank you guys very much. Bye. 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 Ooh, and a round of applause. Love it.